me today? Is in her right hand. It's in her right hand. And her and and in her left hand is what? No, riches and honor. See, when you start to change your vocabulary and you start believing your own words, you can you can change your financial situation. You can. How are you going to do that? Because now you start to believe your words. So what do you what do you begin to do? You begin to use your words to create your heart's desire. How do you do that? By hearing what God is saying and simply believing it and, re and repeat what he has said. God looked at you and said, he looked at you and said, well, Deborah, he said, Deborah, I, I have made you so wealthy beyond your wildest dream. Then all of a sudden on the inside, your spirit heard that, but now your head, you may not understand it, but that don't mean it's not true. Because your head don't understand, don't mean it's not true. Because, see, we don't live by our head knowledge. We, li we live by our spirit knowledge. We live by our spirit knowledge. And so that's why God wants us to understand. We need to train ourselves to start believing our words. That's why, when, that's why God, he wants, when we start making confessions over our lives, if we don't believe these confessions, if we don't believe our own words, then how are we going to expect them to come be manifested in our heart? See, our spirit, our spirit is, uh, is, is just like God. Our spirit, God created us in his own image and after his life. And what is God like? The Bible said in, in, in John chapter 4 and verse, 20, verse 24 that God is a spirit. They that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. So we know that God is a spirit. And he said in, thir in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that, that that, uh, uh, that God preserve you spirit, soul, uh, spirit, soul, and body. So we see that God created us a spirit. Amen. So we are in the same class as who? As God. Why? How do you say that? Because I'm not talking. Uh, this is not. This is not blasphemy. This is God's word. Because God created us in His own image, and after His likeness. Amen. He created us in His own image. After Look at chapter four and verse number five. Chapter 4 and verse number 5. Proverbs 4 and 5. And it says, Get wisdom, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of what? My mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. Get understanding. Amen. And so we see here that God, and let's read verse number 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou canst embrace her. Amen. Wisdom is going to begin to speak to your heart, and it's going to begin to bring you to a place of honor. Amen. What is the wisdom? It's God speaking to you. It's God speaking to you. Amen. God speaking to you. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. God is speaking to you. You have to prepare your heart to hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's let now, now, now I want you to I, I want you to see something here. I want you to see something. Let's go to let's go to chapter 6. Chapter 6 and verse number 20. Chapter 6 and verse number 20. It says, Proverbs 6, verse 20. And walk with thou, and why with thou, my son? Glory to God. And why would thou, my son, be uh, reverenced with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? That's it. So, okay, little about that, a lot about you. Huh? No, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the. That's not that you asked me to write. I'm in the wrong. I'm in chapter five. Let's go to chapter six and verse twenty. I, no, I said, I said that don't read like I was reading this morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> or last night. But notice what it said in verse number twenty. He said, "My son, keep thy father's what commandment, and forsake her, and forsake not the law of thy mother." Keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Amen. See, when we keep the word of God, 
And when we meditate upon the word of God, and when we allow the word of God to begin to, to, to uh, come alive on the inside of us, it's because we have meditated upon it. It's because we have chosen that word, and that word not only, not only did we chose, but the word chose us to what? Speak back into us as we begin to uh, meditate upon that word. We begin to draw the life out of that word through meditating. Now that we've drawn the life out of the word through meditating, that word all of a sudden is going to begin to come alive and we're going to begin to speak back into your life. See, God speaks through his word. God speaks through his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Luke. Look at Luke with me. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Oh, Thank you, Lord God. Thank Wait a minute. Let's go to Isaiah first. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all get anything out of this this morning? Isaiah 32. And I want you to look with me here at verse number 17. Isaiah 32 and verse number 17. And it says, and the work of righteousness shall be peace. Now, now notice what now notice what it says. When we walk in the right before God, and we we abide in God's conduct, living in God's conduct, and His and and, and, and His and His uh, way of doing things. Guess what it's going to bring to us? See, you might be having turmoil all around you, but when you start to yield to God's way, it's going to add to you what the Bible said: the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness. Quietness. Remember I talked about, remember how I talked about on last Sunday morning that it's good sometimes to just get quiet before the Lord? Amen. Now we see here in the scripture that when we are quiet, we can we have we experience God's peace like we never have before. We can, I mean, we can be around all kind of things and everything that's trying to compete for your attention. But if you just want, if you just shut down everything, and you just like, Lord, there's so much happening around me, but God, I don't want nothing on the outside in a fear of what I want you to do on the inside, but what you do on the inside. So I'm gonna shut down everything. I'm gonna become quiet from within. See, you can be you can be in a noisy place, but still you can become quiet from within. You can shut everything out, and all of a sudden. You're in that peace zone, in a place where peace abides. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, glory to God. Oh, I feel something on this thing. All of a sudden, you're starting to feel the gentleness. Hallelujah. Verse 17, and it said, the peace and the effect of righteousness, gentleness. Amen. And assurance forever. See, when we are in God's place, we can hear more clearly what God is saying. Now, since we have peace, and we know that we're, we're praying that God hear us, guess what? We have, we know that because he hears us, we have the petition that we desire for him, that we desire him. So we know that when we're praying, we, we, have to, we have to have peace in our own heart. We have to be settled in our own mind. We have to know what God is doing and it's for our good. Amen. And it is for our good. So we see that God has called, caused us to rise up. So how am I going to hear from God? Let's turn to the book of Joshua. Then we'll go back. Then we'll come back to the other verse. Let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1. Glory to his name. Glory. Joshua, chapter 1. Well, Pastor, you're going the other way. Yeah. The Lord is leading me this way, so we're going to follow the leading of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to look here at verse number, verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. See, God is talking to Joshua, and he's telling Joshua how that he's going to uh, use him and what he can, he can expect by him following 
this understanding that he get from, from God. He said right here, verse number eight, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth. In other words, Joshua, don't, don't you dare let this book depart from you. you de Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt what? Meditate therein day and night. Meditate therein day and night. Why is God telling you to meditate therein day and night? See, you don't understand. What you don't understand about the word of God is the word of God is a, it, it, when you hear the word of God and you receive the word of God, it comes to you as seed form. The word of God comes to you as seed form. Amen. So that word that you're meditating upon, it first came to you as a seed. Wait a minute. How do you, how do you, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, well, let me just explain to you. There was a young lady in the Bible. Her name was Mary. Amen. Her name was Mary. She didn't know no man, but an angel came to her and spoke to her. See how God spoke to her? He threw an angel. Threw an angel. See, God don't, he don't have no, no, no particular way. To, see, God got many ways to speak to you. But he spoke to Mary through this angel. And no, now notice what he said. Mary, thou hast found favor with God. Amen. And thou shalt conceive, and that one shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. But, but how, can I, how can I conceive? I don't have a man. I don't, have a, I don't even have a boyfriend. Amen. I'm just kind of paraphrasing it. Amen. I don't even have a boyfriend. But the name said, but that, and that whole thing that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the highest. And so she just caught him off. She was just caught off guard. And she said, okay, then, if that's true, then let it be even as you have spoken. Then all of a sudden, the word that she heard by the Spirit of God hovered above her. Then it just zoom, right into her spirit. She heard it. She received it. Now that word is beginning to germinate and begin to take on flesh. <clears throat> Y'all understand that? She heard it. She received it. Now that word is taking on flesh. Now that word is about to produce after its kind. That's why it's so important for us. We need to hear what God is saying. We need to hear what God is saying. And we need to make on what God is saying. And let it go. Not we got to go beyond our mind. Because see, if it's hanging around in our mind, we still, we still going to be struggling with an under, trying to understand it. You may not understand it right now. You don't have to understand it right now. Just know that God is speaking to you. That's all you need to know. Amen. Then as God speaks to you, that word begin to, that word begin to settle in your spirit now. And as that word begins to settle, that word begin to germinate in your life. Hallelujah. And that word begin to take on shape and form. Hallelujah. And it began to produce. Next thing you know, because you have held you, because you did not allow uh, the, the enemy to bring doubt in your heart concerning that word, that word began to germinate, began to bring forth, and now you see the manifestation of it. That's how people receive from God. That word, they hear the word from God. They hear what God said. Then they take the word and they begin to meditate upon it. That's why he said right here in, in verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, day and night, day and night, night and day. In other words, you don't stop meditating upon the word until you settle into your spirit. And once the word settles into your spirit, it, is be, it, is, it, it has become, it has become flesh. And now it's ready to produce. Why? Because now you have, you, have, you have received the word of God and the power of that seed have manifested in your spirit. Now when you declare it, you can see the manifestation of it. And now from that point on, you're not going to have that problem over that area of your life no more. Why? Because you have faith in that area. Because you allowed the word to go into your spirit. You meditate upon it. That word become alive. It came alive. And now you, you're speaking it. That word is because it went beyond seed form, and it, began, it became to a manifestation in your heart. Amen. And it gave you faith to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. How did it happen? By meditating. Because there, for, he said, by meditating day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. So we know that taking God's word, meditating upon God's word, Bring us to a realm of success. Look, look at James 
James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verse number 16. James chapter 5 and verse number 16. Oh, Pastor, where is James? It's right before Peter. Amen. It's right before 1 Peter. Amen. It right, it's in between 1 Peter and Hebrews. Amen. James chapter 5, verse, 5, verse number 16, and it says, now notice what is this. This is very, very important. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, when you what I'm saying is this: when you don't you don't need to uh, you you don't need to have a a, a mind con uh, a boggled with condemnation. You don't need to be you don't need to walk around what the devil calls. See, when you start activating on the word of God, when you start meditating and when you start speaking the word of God the devil going to bring these thoughts up to your head well don't you know you did this just the other day you you know God ain't going to bless you look what you did just the other day what is he doing he's trying to bring up your past trying to bring up he's trying to put condemnation in your heart to keep you from believing what God is what God is wanting to do in your life amen or what God is doing in your life what is he trying to do stop your faith from operating stop your faith from working stop you from receiving from God stop you from hearing from God Amen. And how's he gonna do that? If you, you, you got, you got, you got to stay focused. You, if you, you, if you commit sin, see when you confess your sin, guess what? God has already forgiven you. So that's not going. That's not an issue no more. That's not an issue because God has already forgiven you. But He don't want you to know that you've been forgiven. So He's gonna keep working at you. He's gonna keep working at you, trying to get you away from what God is doing in your life. If you know that you've been healed, then why do you have to keep? Why do you got to listen to what the devil? Well, you know, you, you did this yesterday. This is what caused this sickness. Well, that you know, you don't even want to, you don't even want to consider even uh, communicating with him back on that line. Why? Because if you start back communi if you start communicating with him, he's, you're going to stop your communicating with God. You don't want to communicate with the enemy. You want to communicate with God. See, you know your father's voice, and a stranger voice you are not following. Oh, hallelujah. And this is so, it's so important that we understand this because whenever God begins to do something uh, uh, supernatural in your life, you always got to realize it's been done because you believe by faith that God is doing it. Everything God does, is do it, He does it by faith. You need to understand that. When you hear God, you need to purpose in your heart, Father, I believe that I will hear what you're going to say to me. Amen. You may, and all of a sudden, you something just come up in your spirit and the Lord say something. He said, daughter, I healed you of, of that disease. And then you don't want to go around and ask somebody, you know what? I think I heard God. I, I think I heard that I'm healed from that disease. You think that's true? No. Don't go around questioning what God has said to you. Just simply believe it, receive it, and act upon it. Lord, I receive my healing. I thank that I'm healed. Oh, God, you did bear my sickness. You carried my disease. And by your sight, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord God. I don't have to walk around with migraine headaches no more. I don't have to walk around with, with back, back pain no more. Father, you healed my body. You healed my skeleton. God, there's no evil can be filled. You shall interplay and come down my dwelling because you have set me free. I heal. I'm healed. And I'm walking in divine health. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. How's that going to happen? Because I'm hearing from heaven. I'm meditating upon the word, and the word is coming alive on the inside of me. And I'm having what the word of God says I can have. How does that happen? Because I'm meditating upon the word. And the word is coming alive on the inside of me. And now it's no longer a struggle for me to hear from heaven because God has dealt with my heart in that area. Now I hear. I can hear. I was just, you know, praying, praying to God the other day, and and I was saying, God, you see what's going on, and and every, you know, uh, I I said, you see how things are happening, what what the enemy trying to do, and I and I said, God, how how are we going how are we going to work this thing out? And God said, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And I said, okay, God, I'll not look at the circumstances, I'll not look at the things, of, I'll not look at the thing we're just seeing, because I know what I if I can see it, it can change, because I'm looking at it from a natural standpoint. If I can see it from a natural standpoint, then that means. I'm looking at something that's subject to change. But when I look at it from the eyes of God, I can see the change manifesting. Hallelujah! Because I'm not looking at it from the man's standpoint. I'm looking at it from the God standpoint. 
<laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. And so we know that things are changing. Amen. And so we know that uh, uh, hearing, hearing, hearing God is a, is a stronghold of faith. You ever heard of stronghold of the image that stronghold of the image he established in your heart to keep you from hearing from God? Well, hearing from God is a stronghold to establish in your heart by faith that you can hear from God. Amen. That you can hear from God. Let's go. Let's go to, uh, because see, it, it, when you hear from God, you know that you hear from God. Look at First Peter. Because see, if we're gonna, if we're gonna, if we, let's just turn to First Peter, chapter one. Since we're already close by there anyway. First Peter chapter one. And look at verse number one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers set, uh, scattered throughout Pontus, Galilee, uh, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethany, elect, call, elect according to the full knowledge of God the Father. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Now, am I in the right place? Yeah, I'm in the right place. Yes, I am. But no, but. Okay. For, uh, elect according to the fourth foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be, now notice what it said, said, verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his, what he says, abundant mercies had what? Begotten us, begotten us again unto what? A lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, who else were raised up with Jesus Christ from the dead when he raised up? We were. We were raised up how? We were raised up in him. That's why he came. That's why he came. That we will rise, be raised up in him. Now, what do you mean? So we raised up in him. So what that, what that put us? Uh, let's turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this because I know you need this right now. You need this right now because see, God wants you to understand that you, you're not to be walking. When you understand who you are and as a child of God, see, you find out, you, you see that you created in God's image and after God's likeness. See, God is divine. God is divine. In other words, there's a nature of divinity within you within you and God is calling you he's calling you to begin to understand who you are how can we how when we hear from God we hear from a divine source so our divine nature has to hear amen has to hear now notice what he says in Ephesians chapter 2 and look at verse number Ephesians chapter 2 and let's look at verse number Oh, shit, keep up. Verse number five. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us, in other words, made us alive, together with Christ. Now, notice that together with Christ, by grace you are saved, verse number six, and had raised us up together, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Now, remember what we just read over there in, in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2? Chapter 1 and verse 3. Amen. Verse 1, chapter 3. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 3, I mean. <laughs> chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to his abundant mercies, had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of the Lord of, of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. 
everything, I'm going to tell you something, when you start to understand God's word, when God starts speaking to your heart, you find, you're going to find out that everything that God has created for you is already waiting for you to reach out to grab it. That's why it's so important that we learn to hear from God. We got to learn to hear from God because, you see, the enemy, if he can keep you dull of hearing, he can keep you away from your inheritance. He can keep you away from your inheritance if he can keep you from not hearing what God is saying to you. When God began to speak, God's going to begin to bring you to that place of abundance. He came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. It's the thief that come to steal, kill, and to destroy, to keep us from hearing what God is saying, to keep us in darkness, to keep us from walking in the light, to keep us away from the promises of God, to keep us from our inheritance. Amen. To keep us from our inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Corinthians. We're getting ready to close it in a few minutes. Look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. And I want you to look here with verse number, oh, glory to God. Let's look at verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. It says, but it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. See? That means God has been talking. Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of men the things, now notice what it says, which God hath prepared for them that love him, that love him. Amen. So we're talking about hearing from heaven, but we got to realize we're already seated in heaven. And the enemy don't want you to understand it. If he can keep you from understanding it, then he can keep you from hearing from heaven. Remember, I just told you where you'll see that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Amen. Now, we see here in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9, it says, But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God have prepared for them that love him. See, how is it going to enter into your heart if you're not, if you're not hearing it? Amen. And then verse number 10 said, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. How is God speaking to us? By the spirit. He's speaking by the spirit. Amen. When you're reading the word, remember the word is life. The word is alive. The word is alive. And that word, when you're reading the word, that word is alive. And that word is alive with God's spirit with God's nature, with God's character. When that word is beginning to jump off that page on you, that's the Spirit of God speaking to you. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Verse number, verse number 10. Let's just, read, let's just read all the way through. I'm going to read verse number 9 through 13. But as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it into the heart of man. The things which prepared, which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. The spirit which, the, now notice what it said. For the spirit, what? Searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For, for, what, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Amen? See, God communicates with us by our spirit. He doesn't reach, He doesn't communicate us by our natural, but by the supernatural. Amen? But by the supernatural. Verse number, verse number 12 says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are what? Freely given to us by God. Well, what things are freely given to us by God? Well, my friend, oh, my God. Uh, let me, let me. Uh, uh. I got, uh, oh, my God. Y'all just, y'all pulling on me. I got to do this, though. Let me just do this real quick. Let me just do this real quick. Let me just do this. Let me just do this. Because, see, you won't believe it if you don't see it in the Word. 
and God wants you to come to the place that you start believing what the word says because see what the word is saying God is going to start manifesting in your life God is going to bring you to a place glory to God before this year is out that you're going to be well prepared for the things that God has for you to understand and to receive hallelujah amen and, 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 and what I want you to see right now is that the things that God has prepared for you look at Ephesians chapter uh, uh, don't hold your pace hold your place over here because I'm not finished over here but in Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 and look at verse number uh, uh, verse oh she keep a lot about verse number th verse number uh, verse 2 just start verse 2 grace be to, to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice what it says. Who had blessed us with all, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ. Amen. So see, now we look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 12. He says, now we, are, now, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are what? Freely given to us of God. What things are given to us of God? Well, it tells us right here in Ephesians chapter 3, verse, chapter, chapter 1, verse number 3. Amen. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God has given you, he has made, a, a, he has made you a, an heir of everything that he has created. God has so much in store for us. But see, if we don't know these things, how can we ever reach out and expect these things to come into our life? We don't never hear the teaching along these lines. So we have to hear the word of God in order for the word of God to be met. See, the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, so then what? Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm, I'm preparing you to receive the promises of God through the reading of the word. Notice what it says, uh, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 2, I mean. Now verse number 13, it says, which things also we speak not in the world, not in the word, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. You know what? You know what? You know what the best teacher is not your experiences. Your best teacher is not, it's not your experiences. Your best teacher is the Holy Ghost. Your best teacher is the Holy Ghost. It's not your experiences. Because the Holy Ghost, he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you what the thing that you made mistakes in, and he's going to show you how to overcome them. Amen. The Holy Ghost is your best teacher, regardless of what you, uh, what you, what you think. Amen. Verse thirteen says, "Which thing also we, which thing also we speak, not in the words of which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches." Comparing, now notice it. Comparing spiritual things with what? With spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, when we understand how God, when God, how God uses us, we know that God speaks to us through our spirit. So we know that we've been given everything pertaining to God, beginning to, to this life in heavenly places. Everything that God has prepared, God has already made available for you and for me. We may not understand it, but that don't mean it's not true. And that's why we're learning, that's why we're studying to get understanding. Amen. To get wisdom, to get understanding. Because when we start to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, God, we, in other words, we begin to hear clearly what the Word of God is saying to us. And God wants us to hear. He wants us to understand because He wants us to prepare our hearts to receive everything that He has for us. And, 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 and I'm telling you, God is speaking today. God is speaking to His people. Look at verse number 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things which is of, of the Spirit. See, if we are still dealing with the natural, we will never hear what the Spirit of God is saying because we're trying to, we're trying to look at, trying to get from, from the outside of God. Everything that we hear from God, we must get it by the Spirit of God. Amen? By the Spirit of God. God is speaking to our hearts, not to our heads. He's speaking to our hearts. And what is the heart? The heart is the part of you that, is, that God created in, 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 like Him. See, God is a spirit. So you see, you look at me, you're looking at the house where the real me, the real spirit lives. I'm just, this body is just the house what I live in. See, if I look at you, I'm looking at the house. But the real you is your spirit, your spirit. And this is the part that when it began to get this revelation of knowledge, this is the part that want to, this, this is the part right now that's on the inside of you understand everything that I'm saying. Your natural mind probably be, you're still trying to uh, uh, 
uh, process some things. But your spirit said, yes, that's what I need. That's what I need to know. That's what I need to hear. That's what I need to understand. That's what I need to perform. Why? Because the spiritual man is going to act on the things that are of God. And if we don't hear, if our, if, if our ears don't hear, and our spirit can't receive it. But it's already been established in heaven. The word of God has already been established in heaven. It's been settled in heaven. We have to establish the word upon this earth. And if I put my hand on myself, I'm, I'm, I'm touching earth. I'm touching earth. What do you mean I'm touching earth? Well, I came from the dust of the earth. God want to establish the word on earth. I'm earth. Amen. He want to establish his word there. He want his word to come alive there. He want his word to come alive in you. Same place. Amen. Because you are earth. Amen. Verse 14 says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for the they for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. So God is speaking, but he's not going to speak to us from a natural He's going to speak to our spirit. He's going to speak to our spirit. I got time for one more scripture before we before we uh, close it down. I, and then right now, I just want to check this, make sure I'm going to the right one because this last one is going it, it, it's, it's gonna, to it's gonna bring it home. Amen. It's going to bring it to the home. Now, let's go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Glory to God. John chapter 5 and verse number 30. John chapter 5 and verse number 30. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Oh, I feel the power of God in this place today. Amen. John chapter 5 and verse number 30 says, I can of my own self do what? Do nothing. But as I hear, notice what it said, I can in my own self do nothing, but as I hear, who's, who's talking? How can I, who's, who's talking to me? Who, who, do, who am I hearing from? I'm hearing from God. This was, who, is this written in red? Huh? So who's talking here? Jesus is talking. See, he said, in my own self, I can't do nothing, but as I hear. See, Jesus never acted on nothing until he heard it himself. And he expects us to do the same thing. He is expecting us to hear. He is expecting us to act upon it. Notice what it says in verse number 30. I can in my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek, notice what it says, I seek not my own will. He's not walking around trying to figure out, trying to build, trying to establish his own agenda. He's only come to fulfill the will of the Father. Hallelujah. He come to hear what his father has to say and to establish his will. I can of my own self do nothing. I, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the father which had sent me. But the will of the father which has sent me. Now, I like verse number 31 too. He says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. But there is another that bear witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Amen? We have to understand God has already put in motion in the earth through his word everything that we need to sustain ourselves. See, we've tried to figure out, Lord, I need a new house. How can I get a new house? How could I get a how can I get a, a, a home for my and, and you know and I got this word right here that I'm gonna share with you. See, I, you know, when you, you believe in God for something, you always you always try to find it in the scripture, what you believe in God for. And then because see, the word is your seed. The word is your seed. Now, I find something in the word of God that pertains to what I'm believing God for. Get that, and I begin to read it and begin to meditate upon it. Get it in my spirit. Now, God is, then, and then next thing you know, God will say, I want you to go out shopping. And so I found this scripture right here, Deuteronomy chapter 6. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6. Amen. And I was just sharing it with my wife this morning. <laughs> Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 6. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And I want to look at verse number 11. Oh, my God. Well, glory to God. Uh, uh, see, uh, verse 10 through 12 is good scripture, but let's just look at verse number 11 for, for time's sake. Because my time is not up. Verse number 11 said, and, and houses full of all good things which thou findest. Which, which thou findest not, and walls, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards, and, and, and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be filled. Now, what is, what is he really talking about here? He, he, he said, I'm a, I, I, your inheritance is the houses that you didn't build. Your, your inheritance is the vineyards that you didn't plant. Your heritage is everything. You see, God has already prepared things for us that are walking in obedience to him. Now, there's God's way of getting these things, and there's man's way of getting these things. If you do it God's way, you'll find out you can get it a whole lot quicker and a whole lot faster. Amen. How are you going to do that? By getting this, this word, it comes to you as a seed. You take this word, you begin to meditate upon this word get this word in your spirit. It's not just something that you're reading now. It is something that you're eating. It's not something that you're reading. It's something that you're eating. You eat this word and all of a sudden this word begins to take on flesh by meditating, reading it over and over, getting it in your spirit, meditating upon it. Then all of a sudden this word come alive. Then, then, you, have a, then you have an impression of God. God. What is the impression? God is speaking to your spirit. And he tells you what he wants you to do next. And so he said, go out now and look for your house. And you go find a, a, a house in a, in a range where you could possibly get it. Then you find a house above that range where you might be able to get a house in a higher range that you know you can't afford. You th and, he said, and God said, now, Get up and go point to that house, <laughs> and call that house into your and call that house into your life. Okay, you might say, well, I don't understand it. But do you have to understand it? No, you don't have to understand it. You just have to walk in obedience. If you want God's best, you got to learn how to hear what God said and do it. Listen, obey. Listen and obey. Listen and obey. Amen. God is not done with us. He just began to prepare us to receive the kingdom of heaven in our lives here on earth. We're in the last days, folks. God is preparing us for the coming of the Lord. And he's not going to bring us home uh, full of disease and broke and busted and all this stuff. God wants to bring us to a wealthy place not going to happen if we can't hear from God. The same way for our health. It's not, we're not going to walk in divine health if we can't hear from God. Everything that God has provided is coming through hearing and obeying the word of God. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Lord God, that you are preparing us, oh God, for a time that is ahead of us. And we will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Not yet, baby. Go back to mama, okay? Go back to mama. I need you to hold her right now. Thank you, baby. And Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that your word would not return void. And everything that you've spoken to our hearts today, Lord, God, you're going to cause our spirit to have an understanding. Not one word will fall to the ground, Father. But Lord, you will help us to have an understanding because, God, we will go over this again and again and again until it is settled in our heart as it's already been established in heaven we shall establish it now in our hearts and as we begin to get an understanding father we will begin to walk out the understanding that we have received 
from your word. And in walking it out, we will receive the manifestation of what you have spoken to our hearts in the natural realm. Oh, God, we are calling it out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm.